Hello everyone, welcome again to the new edition of In The Zone. Together with me is Coach PK, Coach Victor and Coach John. Hi Knight, how you doing? How are you? Hi. Hi guys. Guys, today we're going to talk about Kawhi Leonard. All right. Do you think it's a good idea that he left Toronto to go to the Clippers? As we know the result of the bubble. All right. What can you say about it? Okay, who want to go first? Let's go. Catch with his left hand. Lately, he goes back to his dominant hand, the right hand, and makes a poster with a couple guys. Who wants to get in there? Okay, yeah. For me, I think uh, I read an article about it. So he basically, Kawhi left uh, left Toronto because, um, well, Canada is not home to him, and uh, he wants to go back to to uh, the US, and uh, that's basically the reason that he quoted, which is he wants to go back to family. So um, living in another country, uh, although it's not very far away. He still can't have access to his uh, family or his extended family. So um, that's uh, the reason why he wants to um, go back. And of course, Clippers had a good situation going where they had the, the key players yeah. roped in to join the team and yeah. really decent coach at that time. But unfortunately, they failed to meet the mark. Lah. So we'll see yeah. whether they can do better next season. Yes, very true. Also, uh, what will happen now? They kick out the coach that uh, <laughs> took, took, Toronto, uh, took him from Toronto. <laughs> Could Victor watch me? I think there are two ways to look at this situation. I mean, he had something going on for him in Toronto. After winning the championship, you know, the, the essentially the whole country was rooting for him to stay. You know, yeah. you, have, you have restaurants basically offering him free meal for the whole wow. year or years, you know, beyond <laughs> roads named after him. The whole nation, people, everyone was wow. offering him to stay. He's like a national hero, you know. Yeah. So it's just a state or something like that. But I think going to LA... Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a challenging step for him, but it will be a necessary step if he wants to be remembered as one of the top tier players. Although he has won MVP for Spurs before, as well uh-huh. as the Spurs, but somehow there's a question mark on his, you know, this achievement because the time with the Spurs, it's not like he was the best player, but he sort of, you know, mm-hmm got MVP because he stopped LeBron mm. in a certain sense, you see, and then the whole yeah. team, you see, have all the legends, you know, mm. they're still playing. Then for the Raptors, some people feel that, you know, he got a little bit lucky with all the injuries to the Golden State Warrior key players, which mm. makes sense. injury happens, but, you know, so I think going to LA, besides like what Coach PK says, going home, I think it was a good a chance for him to build up his brand. You know, to mm. go to the same, you know, same city as LeBron, and yeah. imagine wins the, the any championship over LeBron, he'll be known as the king of LA. Yeah. You see, and, um, it's always personally, I always think that it's good to leave a situation on a high. So after leaving Toronto, you know, sure, after sure. the championship, you, you you leave them on a high. Yeah. Be like, wow, I always remember you. It's it's something like. The same as how LeBron left Cleveland after winning. You know, like you got it, it's, it's time to go. Then, you know, yeah. the second season, people will say that, oh, you're lucky the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think there are certain considerations. So I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, but he chose it, he lost, and then he can only try to, you know, uh, uh, get one over LeBron next season. Yeah. But I think it's his decision. We really don't know uh, yeah, the depth of it. But the way Coach Victor say, right? Oh my God, he, got, he, he is treated like a hero. I should have stayed for one year. For me, yeah, for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then whatever happens, right? Whatever happens, like you're proud, okay? If he gets another title, it would be great. Okay, third title will be great. We lose, right? He can always go back. Any team will take him eventually, honestly. The way he, he, he did it in Toronto, yeah, but that's for him. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I think okay. Raptors did very well without him, though. 
So this season yes. is very well. But unfortunately, True. if they still had him, they might have gone all the way as well. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about TK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. Coach Jan, what do you think about it? Well, the fact that he was born and raised in, in LA, you know, it's understandable. If, as PK said, that was the reason he gave for wanting to go back home. Um, you know, if he had have left Toronto and gone to another another state in the US, I think that would be a pretty pretty weak um, mm. reason. But, you know, if he's actually gone back to his home state and where he grew up and, and where yeah. he was born, I think it's a fair reason. Um, yes. He's, maybe, he's a very, maybe he's much, you know, some people are big family people. They, they want to be around family. Yes. Boston, you know, Canada and Toronto is not very far across the border into the US, but out of the US. Yeah, but, but again, it's a long way across the country. It's a big country. So yeah, true. I think that's a fair reason if that was the reason given. And you know, he's got time to he's got time to build up that same sort of platform and have free meals in LA, I guess, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very true. I agree with you. Even though uh yeah, if my hometown invited me and then I have an opportunity to represent my hometown where I grew up, who would want? I mean, you tell me, you're a player of Costa Rica, Costa Rica. Even uh, John, you invited yeah, I mean, like, you know, Exactly, mate, right. as you say, you know, if, you, if it's your hometown, then you can, yes. then you can achieve and be quite successful. He's obviously a, a great yes. player. Uh, he's potentially got a lot more years in him still, of course. And Yes. You know, why wouldn't you want to represent your hometown? I, I, I understand that completely. Guys, do you know who made this? I'm going home to win a title for my hometown. Who made this idea fashionable? LeBron. LeBron. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Once he has done, the, you know, I'm the kid from, you know, Akron, from Cleveland. Once he has done that, everyone says that, oh, I want to go home. I want to play for my hometown, blah, blah, blah. Before that, you don't hear this kind of thing. You don't hear Michael Jordan saying, oh, I'm going to, I come from. You don't even know where Michael yeah. Jordan originated from, which town, which county yes. or whatever. Or the, or the main players in the 80s, 90s, you know, even 2000s, we, we, we don't know until you say, oh, you know, I have this song, I'm coming home, I'm coming home, you know, wow, yeah. the, the, all, all, all your family members, you know, supporting. So he made this fashionable. So once yeah. you hear these people going, okay, I, 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 I don't really dig that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> Might be a little bit unfair on Michael Jordan there, Victor. He's his hometown in North Carolina didn't have an NBA team. How's he going to go home? Mm. <laughs> <Fair> point. <laughs> point. I think you know LeBron, as you say, he made it a bit of a thing, and and then of course he left. He left and went to make another hometown, maybe. But big respect to Kawhi. You know the, he knows that he's gonna uh, play against LeBron, and he got a balls, you know, to challenge. You know, LeBron in LA, that, that would I respect. I really respect him big a lot. I feel that LeBron makes a lot of uh, narrative, a lot of headlines, you know, uh, story <laughs> within story. So now the, the next one will be, you know, at age 35 and beyond, you can still play at the highest level. <laughs> you can still win championships. <laughs> so you have Chris Paul now, he's like, you know, re rejuvenated. Oh, I can play a couple more years. Yeah, you have players yeah. believing that. Oh, now, you know, uh, uh, 35 is the new 25, the kind of thing. Yeah. Before, everyone's like, oh, I'm going to retire at 34, 35, you know, almost only the top. Maybe one or two players will, will go on to play. Now, everyone's like, oh, you're going to retire at 35. That's a bit too young, you know, the kind of thing. All because of LeBron, you see. So, winning a championship now is sort of boring. For, for <laughs> some you need more storyline for the new generation. Yeah. Influence of LeBron, you know, is really big impact to all the players. A hypothetical question for everybody. Do you think that LeBron will eventually do a full circle and go back home? You know what I, I'm thinking? He's waiting for his side night, Brownie. Okay? He's waiting for them to play. And the best way to go there, I don't know if Brownie is so good. Even though he's a mediocre, right? That's the next storyline. Yeah, next bit storyline playing on the, on the same team. Maybe when the son is drafted into a certain team, and then LeBron will just go there on a minimum contract and then play with the son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has it has it been done? Does anybody know? Has it been done in the NBA? Is a father and son play? Not yet. Oh, never. Usually, 
usually <laughs> most dads don't last that long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Retire, you know, before 35. Be the first father and son to win an NBA championship together. Yeah. <laughs> that will oh, really make history. Yeah, very big. That's very probably big. one that uh, won't be breaking for a while as well. Like. Oh, he'll throw par that in. Final teams. Look at this as he just put it back up and through with a lot of congestion around. Not about the money. Did he get more money leaving? It's anybody know? It's good that you uh, mentioned about the money. You know that we talk about it, right? We talk mm. about the hometown, we talk about the legacy, but we didn't talk about the money because, mm. as you can see, that uh, Kawhi Kawhi reputation is really because good. they earn so much. These top tier players, they, uh. they don't even think about the money part already. You know, it's really. The money part really is a consideration for those in the middle and the lower tier. So actually, mm, yeah, sure. for them, it's like I'm getting like 100. I, you know, I, mm. I, I don't get 20. Big deal. That kind of thing. Really, I like career, my, like the, the recent one, James Harden already, you know, uh, got to earn 500 million in his career. So he's like giving up two years or 100. It's like, so what? That kind of thing. It's yeah. very different from... You know, those earning, you know, like a few million, it's like, wow. Everyone's like, wow. You yeah. want to sign the kind of thing. So the attitude is different. So for Kawhi, it's like, here and there, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, Might be said an issue. Change, yeah. Some change of what? Seven, eight million? Anyway, I think yeah. he, he, the, 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 the amount he got was similar. Yeah. So not much difference that for the news to talk about it anyway. <laughs> he, he want to, you know, because right now, if you talk about it, you don't even mention him in the same line as Kevin Durant. Although yeah. both of them, they got two MVPs. People still think that Kevin Durant is better. Yes. Somehow the uh, stature, the, the, the profile is higher. So I think for his own people, you know, he wants to, to just raise himself further. That's why he goes to yeah. LA. But, well, he failed. And yeah, then point. He had a choice now, whether to go to Lakers or stay in the Raptors or join the Clippers. But because Paul George went to the Clippers and he wanted to play Paul George. And also, I think if he plays with LeBron and they win a title together, uh, who's going to be MVP? <laughs> LeBron, <laughs> yeah, most likely. He rejected the Lakers. He, LeBron yeah. invited him to play with Lakers, but he don't want. Yeah. So he, that, that's why he's, you know, he wanted to challenge this uh, yeah. LeBron. Internally in the city first, then after that, of course, if you beat them, then you go to the finals. Maybe they feel that the Eastern teams are all crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think if he had won uh, this year, if he had won, then he would have like been the first guy who won a title and MVP with three different teams. But well, LeBron beat him to that. <laughs> Two-time MVP in junior college 
10 years in coaching now head coach of Stingers Club okay also guys is one okay of what you what you call as a player athlete okay because he is NUS engineering first class honor so right all right uh, i will not go further because we're gonna finish tomorrow it's like that okay uh shake uh we have to talk about your history making uh last two zero one three and two zero one five what does it look like or can you describe to us what does it mean what happened back then when i was uh still considered a young national athlete uh, we didn't think of much we were definitely the underdogs the dark horses uh -huh. uh, nobody not much about us. Yes. We just played as hard as we can. Mm -hmm. We went into so I played three C games. The first one we didn't win it with a medal. Uh -huh. right, so only on the second, which is 2013, and this is the third one that I played yes. that didn't win results. So going into C games, all we wanted is to do our best, uh -huh. see what we can learn from the powerhouses mm -hmm. in the region, and yeah, just just improve Singapore basketball in general. So it really not a lot of pressure going in. Just you know, with the attitude to learn and see. see what the, what the standard is out there. Wow. Yeah. And then good things just happen. So <laughs> very, very fortunate to be here. Wow. So you are the first batch that really break breaking history in Singapore basketball. That's why your bat is really a, a history maker bat. Okay, and right now you're a full time coach. Yes, yes. Alright. And you are full time coach with honors degree in engineering. <laughs> okay. I'm so curious. Why did you choose coaching? You know, you are an honors honors degree in nine years, my God. Why, why, why basketball coach? First of all, it is the, the passion that I have for basketball, uh -huh. and I find that you know, through coaching, I can improve a lot of lives. I can inspire wow. the generation, and I think it, it means a lot more to me to do that mm -hmm. than to just you know, if I chose the engineering way or uh -huh. go to the corporate world. It would be quite a repetitive, like 9 to 5, that, you know, I yes. might, may or may not like. But I know, wow. because I already started coaching with SG, even uh -huh. before graduation. So yes. I like the environment, I yes. like what I did. Yes. And when I was offered this opportunity, I was like, no, why not just give it a try? And yes. Here I am. And Coach Sheng also is one of the pioneers here, right? In SG basketball. I saw last time where you started SG basketball. It's so small. But uh, you feel it and feel very big right now. And NG Basketball, as you can see, guys, is the biggest okay basketball academy in Singapore. And of course, we have the best coaches, as you can see in our previous interview. And now, Coach Sheng is here with us. Okay, uh, we're gonna go out to basketball world. I saw your Netflix. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I want to talk about more about your Netflix. Uh, what 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 happened, uh, guys? If you haven't watched, okay, uh, the Netflix movie of Coach Sheng, okay, I think it's the Giant. What thing, the Giant? Meeting the Giant, okay, Netflix. Okay, we are so proud that we have uh, <laughs> fully that is in the Netflix, guys. Watch it. Trying to recover from that, and then uh, director Tepik Kwe, a local yes. actor, he was looking for basketball, local basketball players uh -huh. that might want to try acting because oh. he, he was doing a basketball movie. Uh -huh. And he told us, so he told us, okay, we can get actors to teach them basketball, or we can get basketball players to teach them acting. Wow! So he chose <laughs> he chose to find us. Wow! Small auditions, shoot around, you know, got to know each other, and then. <laughs> to be one of the cast. <laughs> <laughs> just a little side project. Okay, okay, okay. Interesting side project for me. Yeah. But, never expected. But you never uh, think about being an actor. Uh, please no. Uh, not my kind. But of one thing. of your teammates uh, went to become an actor. Right? You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you saw him. Yeah. yeah. In fact, two of them are now 
I think, full time actors. Wow. Yeah, the few of us, you know, some of us, Delvin is still playing pro. Okay. I mean, just retired yeah. because a few of us, you know, <laughs> did not choose to go okay. acting, but of course, some of us, some of us don't want to. All right, yeah, but uh, yes, uh, it's a very good memory. It know, is a of very interesting. Talking about that, uh, can you share to us uh, some of your unforgettable moments, maybe when you are still playing and coaching if you have? When I was playing, I mean for sure winning the bronze medals, uh, uh, you know, unforgettable, best, the best basketball memories that I ever had. But also the 2013 uh, AVL 3 point shootout. Mm -hmm. Back then I was either a rookie or a second year, I can't remember. Either one, yeah, you're still very Either, young, yeah, either one, right. So I was quite new to the team. I was yeah. obviously not our best three-point shooter. Uh-huh. Oh, really? Was... <laughs> yeah, but hey, you won the three-point Yeah, exactly. So I think my, my coach was like, oh, uh, Sheng, you don't get too many minutes. Just <laughs> I wasn't playing too many minutes, but I, I was practicing really hard. I was trying to be a, a good shooting guard. Yes. So I was still finding my way around. Yes. And then my coach was like, oh, you've been training hard. So give it a shot. <laughs> let, the, let the mid fight rest. You just go ahead. So that was a, like a like a all star weekend. So we yeah. had matches and three point shooters, skill contests, dunk contests, and stuff. Wow. So, so we divided, you know, the team. A few of us were there in Vietnam. Oh, oh, it's in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So he just said, oh, what do you want to do it? I said, of course, why not? I went in knowing that you know, all of everybody I was going up against were the were the nation's top shooters. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Mario Usam. Leo Abenido, all the wow. top three points. Oh wow! In KBL. So I was <laughs> nobody and no. You rest the whole time. <laughs> yeah, right. Very much happened. Yeah, very interesting experience. But then do you experience uh, what happened to your. Uh, I'm so curious, guys, those who are playing in uh, junior college, okay, I want to know more uh, how would Shake uh, get the two time MVP? Is it consecutive here? Yeah, because in Singapore we do junior college for two years. When you are 17 year old and 18, mm. yeah. Right. So I was really in a good team. I was uh, I was offered a DSA. To All right. Out. Wow. Yeah. So I was already yeah. I was already in the top basketball school. Okay. And I was just fortunate to play well. Wow. <laughs> a couple of times. All right. Yeah. Well, very humble, yeah, very humble, but very 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 And uh, he didn't study well. That's what you. <laughs> you know right? What right? Okay. Okay, uh, get away from playing, okay, as a coach, okay, we want to know more about you as a coach. Uh, how, how do you coach or what age group do you love to coach? Mm, I actually, okay, like with SD, uh, coach, we are coaching every day, we know it is more tiring to coach the beginners. Yes. Right? But I actually find it very challenging, I like doing that. Beginners. Right? I, like, I like to teach beginners because one, when I was young, when I was starting out, uh -huh. I also met a nice, a nice old man. He's not even a coach. He's not even my coach. He just taught me the basic. He taught me wow. how to shoot it. He taught me how to hold the ball, how to dribble it. And I thought those little interactions that it, it helped me so much throughout the rest of my career. So I, 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 I experienced that myself, and I know that if I, if I can impart the correct fundamentals, the correct basics, the correct mindset into how you want to train, how you want to be as a player, and that could impact a player, a young player, for many, many years to come. Just like how I experienced it myself. So every time if I if I get to you know, put, uh, get my hands on a newcomer, a new trial, I'm always excited to, to show them the room, you know, just you know, just yeah. talk to them and really you know, get them involved, get them excited. The hardest, but it is hard, <laughs> it's more tiring, but you know, it's it's very rewarding. Yeah. And when they remember what you teach them when they come back again, oh yeah. coach, oh I'm doing it this way now and you, you feel so proud of that, you so, 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 so satisfied. Wow, alright guys, as you heard from Coach Sheng Yu. Okay, for those who are right now out there who want to learn how to play basketball, even though you're a beginner, the okay? main coach Sheng is actually head coach of a singer basketball club. Located at right now because it's COVID, okay, they are doing it at first, but uh, they are doing it actually in planning trials. Okay, when the, the schools are open, they will be there, okay, if you want to be coach. And to learn from Coach Sheng, okay, you can call any basketball now, all right, or email us, DM us in uh, Facebook or Instagram, okay, look for Coach Sheng, okay, definitely, okay, uh, the admin people will give you Coach Sheng, 
All right. I could say, okay, we go to your uh, uh, achievement coaching, okay, because uh, right now, uh, I know you just started, okay, can you share to us, maybe uh, not all, but some of your most memorable time or achievements in coaching? When I was starting out, before SG Basketball even existed, uh -huh. uh, I was assistant coaching in the neighborhood school in the north called Canberra Set. Yes. Uh, I was just assistant coaching uh, for, for my buddy Wigan. Mm -hmm. Wigan yeah. So together we actually brought one of the badges into the North Zone Finals, which was wow. unheard of. Yeah. Because <laughs> no yeah, same thing underdog, like no, nobody's yes. thought anything about Canberra Set. But you know, that was one of my first coaching milestones and I thought, oh wow, it's so amazing, you know, to, to bring a group of nobodies. Yeah, very good feeling. Yeah, and go to a big stage and then have yes. them play. You know, it's a nice stadium, yes. good crowd, and then you know when you win games, you feel the, the, the highs and lows. You then go through the emotions. Yeah, that was one of the first moments in my coaching wow. that really determined my philosophy and and and, and uh, solidified my, my my vision. That's that's so you want to be a coach? Yeah, coach. yeah. That's yeah. Very good. yes, yes. Oh it's so it's so it's so so fulfilling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so check because you are a coach right now. Anybody or as a player, coach or as a player that impacted you to become a coach and a player. Anybody? Um, one of the coaches that I had uh -huh. that really, really sculpted me as uh -huh. a player, whether on court or off court, would be uh, the current Stingers head coach, Mr. Neil Bingsiang. Wow, I played under him. The national, he was the national team coach mm. for my first five, six years, yes. seven years, and then when he uh, stopped with the, uh, Stinger, uh, the national, national team, team, he was still involved in Stingers, which yes. I was still part of. So I think all together, I was training under Coach Neil for close to ten yes. years, and he really showed me he, the goal standard, his discipline. Wow. He, he really you know when I was trying to give up, when I was showing. A less than ideal attitude to talk to wow. me, he would you know, encourage me. And you know, and especially when I first started playing at a professional level, I was having a hard time to transition because I was playing power forward yes. before. And then in slingers, I was made to play shooting guard. Yes. So all of the basic fundamentals, the footwork, my fitness, my handles, three point shooting, I didn't even shoot a three pointer before I met Coach Neil. Oh wow. Uh, and then he really held my hand and, and, and brought me through that journey. Wow. So his patience. Him as a role model really, really set the tone and, and showed me how, how, how I can do things as a player and also after that as a coach. Yes. A lot of his philosophies, you know, he's very, you know, he's very hard on discipline, yes. punctuality, good attitude, you know, all of this stuff. I actually took it from him and I also tried to implement it. Wow. Yes, I heard so much from Coach Yu. Coach Yu, thank you so much for impacting so many players, you know, that, you've been, uh, that have been through you. Okay, we certainly admire you and a lot of coaches admire you. We are supporting uh, Slingers every time we're watching and, and good luck in every game for you. Okay, <laughs> alright. So before we end, okay, uh, last one question. Okay. We want to get some golden nuggets from you, golden advice from you, okay, as a player and as a coach. Go. Okay, yeah, as a player, as a coach, I think pretty much the same, you never should feel that you are good enough. The day that you are complacent, the day that you think, oh, I'm not part of, part of the best player in this team, the day you ever feel that is actually the day you stop improving. Wow. So as a player, never be satisfied. Yes. Right. If you are the, if you are the best player in the team, think about what, how else you can improve, how do you improve the quality of your training, mm -hmm. your peers. You know, as a coach, if you have won a couple of games, that's, that's not enough. How do you make this team even better? How do I bring up all the weaker players? How do I bring it up? Bring up to the the higher level yes. in the shortest time possible. So always challenge yourself, always think, uh -huh. and just never be contented with, with just a bit of success in the yes. you know, There's never, you know, there's always you know, more to yes. more to get There you go, guys. Don't stop learning from Coach Shenyu. All right, Coach Shenyu, thank you so much for being here today. Okay, guys. Guys, you need to listen and then re-listen again. Okay, because there's a lot of things that. We learn, okay, from today's Coach Shanks interview. And that's for In The Zone Coaches Edition. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. -bye.
everyone, welcome again to Coaches Edition in the Zone. Today, we have a very special guest, Coach Lin. Okay, Coach Lin, how are you? Can you introduce yourself? How about a coaching career, playing, anything you want to say to our audience? Hello everybody, I'm Coach Lin. I, well, uh, kind of like I started really, really young. Mm -hmm. uh, so to me, it's back in 2003. Uh -huh. I started my first coaching career uh -huh. and wow. it was like life asked me to be a camera coach it's not because I want to coach Wow! because I need to survive so I, I started coaching because of that reason 2003? yes until now that's 17 years yes that's 17 years <laughs> that's long alright yes. <laughs> in coaching career okay uh, can you share to us what did you achieve you know not not only medals, right, or anything that you want to share, maybe life experience, yeah. also uh, achievements, if you want. Okay, achievements, I can say that my latest achievement will be last year, uh -huh. um, after I joined the SG team. Mm -hmm. So I brought the women's team into the championship, uh -huh. they become a champions in the Wee Namki Cup. Wee Namki Cup, yeah, 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 yeah. The last, last one. I saw that photo. Yeah, and then in the CBL, I have got, okay, I can say I've got plenty of champions, second, Third place, I've got kind of got plenty. So, I'm kind of worried. In a little bit, if you because it's, it's half a half a year season, so it's like yeah, quite quite a few. But most important thing that I get from this coaching career is that I get a lot of kids mm -hmm. that really become good people. Yes. And and they learn from life and everything. So it was was a, 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 the achievement I felt was like I feel very proud that these kids grow up to become good right. people. You're not only teaching basketball, you're also teaching characters and life to the kids. Yes. What uh, what fulfillment did you get about it? Well, they become great people because uh -huh. most importantly, basketball is just an example of uh -huh. how you live a life. If you are aggressive in life, you mm. be aggressive in basketball. So wow. it's all about the right mentality. Everything got to be doing it properly and you got to stay on with it. You start it off and then you got to end it off nicely. So that's what I feel about basketball okay. in life. Talking about as a player, okay, you yourself become a player. When did you start playing? Can you share that? I started when I was 13 years old. Uh -huh. So I was very, I started when I look at a TV show, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I started on looking at a TV show and I, I started playing basketball, uh -huh. joined the national team for five uh -huh. years and I retired at 21 years old. Wow. Yeah. You retired so early. Because you like, I, I, yeah, like 30. well, yeah. Too good already. <laughs> no, yeah. But I, but do, during these five years, I have a lot of chances to go to other countries for games, for wow. trainings and, and whatnot. So, and that gives me a, a very good opportunity to become an under-18 coach after that, once I started to do coaching. So, uh, when did you start under-18 coaching? When you were, how old? I think I was 30, 35 or something. Oh, yeah, all I right. Yeah, I coached under-18s. All right, talking about it also, uh, what age group do you love to coach? I like to coach <laughs> under-18 and under above. Under-18. All right. Yeah, 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 under-18. And, and the elite team is... The fulfillment is very different. You coach uh -huh. the young ones, it's like you need to make sure that they are, you gotta be, have a lot of patience. For the older ones, I just whack them. <laughs> easier. Yeah. yeah. That means yeah, it's easier to coach the, the big ones than the... Um, no, the, the fulfillment and the kind of the things that you feel when you coach the young ones and the old ones are very, very different. Oh, because older right. kids, they have their own thinking. Did anyone influence you to become a coach or a player? Anybody? No, not really. Your favorite coach or player? Don't have any. Don't have any. It's just a pure, uh, uh, pure desire to play basketball. Yes. Pure passion. Correct. All In the right. beginning, it was just pure passion and, and the sudden like of it. And then when I started coaching, like I said, it's because of life. Uh -huh. And then after a while, you get to feel that, okay, I need to do something better. Right, Coach so, Lin, do you have any memorable moments, you know, while you're still in a basketball action, coaching or playing? I think most the, the most memorable one that I have was that when I was playing in a competition, uh -huh. I had 15 three points. Wow, that's a record. Yeah, for one game. One game, 15 yes. Yes, that three was, points. Yeah, that, it would never get off my mind, so that was the one and only. But I set a benchmark for myself. Uh -huh. This is something that I want players to be able to do. 
because in a competition having three well having 15 is there is like 45 a, points yes wow oh my yeah, god not including others uh, so you <laughs> scored like uh 50 60 that, that yeah game? but that was on my prime so it was like oh yeah it was it was very very fun and oh my god guys <laughs> If you want to shoot more, okay, three points, talk to Coach Lin, call and you basketball right now. Okay, Coach Lin, mm. before we close, uh, I want you to uh, give advice, maybe golden nuggets to those coaches mm -hmm. or players that uh, dream to become a coach someday or they have a dream to be a player someday. Okay, for a coach, basically, don't coach because you are being asked to coach. Uh -huh. Coach because you want to coach. Wow. Yeah, that's very important and because and then coach with the heart. A lot of coaches now doesn't coach with the heart. I think mm -hmm. most importantly, coach with the heart, coach because you want to. Yes. And as a player, put your best effort, whether you are talented or you're not talented. Mm -hmm. I think 80%, was it 80%? Uh -huh. That more, uh, hard work really pays off. Even yes. if you don't have a talent, you just need to work very, very hard. So this will be the advice I give to anyone who wants to become a basketball mm -hmm. player or become a basketball coach. All right, guys, you heard it from Coach Lin herself. All right, Coach Lin, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much today. as well. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's for In The Zone Coaches Edition. See you next time. All right, guys, coaches, thank you so much, okay, for this discussion, okay? For any one of you is tuning in today, all right, you can comment below, suggest anything you want us to talk about, all right? We hear you and we want your suggestion. All right, and that's for In The Zone. See you next time. Bye-bye. See you guys. Bye. See you all again. Bye.